All right. Hi, everyone. I just want to introduce myself. My name is Marissa Castillo. Um, just to give you a little background on what I teach, uh, I teach somatics and ballet. This class is going to focus on somatic concepts to help us embody a dynamic midline. Uh, there won't be ballet per se in this class. It's just going to be the uh, investigation. And we'll do movements to play with that idea and, um, and then get up and stand and see how that informs our alignment in a way that promotes ease, promotes comfort, promotes just knowing where you're at in your body without this need to pull on yourself or to force something to happen. Um, it's definitely a practice um, in self-care. And so uh, I encourage you not to make yourself do anything. I also encourage you to even maybe not listen to me, listen to yourselves, listen to what you need. Um, with that said, make sure you are comfy. Um, blankets, pillows, whatever you need because you're going to be laying down. And so you might want to at this time grab any cushions or anything to make that nice for yourselves. Cushion, pillows, mat. blankets. Just really, really cultivate your comfort. I encourage you to cultivate your comfort. Um, so for some, that might just mean I just need one blanket. For others, that might mean, oh, I could use a pillow here, and I can use a pillow here, and I can um, maybe even hug a stuffed animal. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's range of comfort is different. All right, so um, this work stems from uh, the genius, what I call the genius teachings of Augusta Moore, uh, who uh, was truly a tra tra trailblazer in um, the study of uh, somatics and um, having this range of comfort and ease and how that helps us organize for what we are needing to do. Um, she was a Feldenkrais practitioner, so, and so she brought that into her classes, but she also brought her unique blend of somatics to, uh, to ballet um, and just into her investigation of the body. Um, other influences come from body-mind centering, experimental anatomy, um, just about anything she studied, she brought back to her classes. Um, and oftentimes, this is how the beginning ballet workshops would begin. They would begin with these really um, kind of in-depth investigations into the body before we stood students up. So my wish is coming true. <laughs> I'm actually having the time to do this. This is my dream to be able to, to do this to, to help set you up. Um, and for others, just see how this might inform, you know, how you are in your body. It's not just for ballet. It's, um, it can really help you be organized and efficient in your movement. Um, and to make it just have more ease. We're just looking for more ease and comfort. Uh, so I'm hoping this is what you will find. In a nutshell, somatic is the study of the living body, the experiences of the living body, which differ greatly from a corpse. And a lot of times, what we know of anatomy comes from the study of corpse. And in dead bodies, cells aren't moving, fluid isn't moving, there's not this condensing and expansion of, of, of our inner oceans. And, um, and so I, I really believe in somatics. I believe it can, it can just really 
help the process of being here on this earth uh, a little kind, kinder and gent gentle presence. Uh, so I just want to give you that background. The first thing in somatics is to let go of your ambition. So as very, you know, accomplished people, people, we, you know, we have stuff to do every day, bop, 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 right? We got to get done. Mm -mm -mm. So that ambition is high every day. And so in somatics, that doesn't work because the somatic, the uh, range of ambition is going to overwhelm your range of comfort, and it's not going to allow you to go into that uh, place of deep learning into your internal space. So I always like to test the range of ambition. And oftentimes in class, yeah, we have to, you know, we're asked to go 100%. We're asked to, you know, give it our all. We're asked to, and in some situations, that's totally fine. But do you always have to do it? Do you always have to be at 100%? And so um, I invite you to play with your range of potential. We don't always have to be here, right? It's actually interesting if you're under that, the process of, of being at 50% versus being always at 100. So you can easily practice this with, you know, raise your arm to, a, to your 100% range of motion. Like, oh, that's here. Or if you're really hyperextended, it's back here. Right? So where's, where's 100% for you? Where's like, bam, I hit the edge. That's it. That's my 100%. Right? Doesn't feel that great, but there it is. And then let it go. And I go ahead and go to 50%. So I'm like, eh, something around here. And just notice what you feel. Right? You're not in that edge of stretch. You're kind of just hanging out. There's still some effort, but it's not as extreme. And then let it go. And then what's 20% of that? Maybe here? How does that feel different? How does the weight feel now on the arm? Do the muscles have to grip? Or can the space now hold you up? I'll let it go. And what's 10%? Well, somewhere around here. And so 10%, I feel like I'm more in neutral. Like if I if I need to go up, I can go up. If I need to go down, I can get down. Boop, boop, boop. Right? I have, there's, I can play with space. I don't always have to be in, in the matter. Right? I can be in the space. And so in somatics, you want to play within the range of 20 to 10 percent. Range of motion, range of effort, less. You want to stay within doing less. And then you have to ask yourself, am I okay with doing less? Because that might mean doing less in your posture. And oftentimes, how we hold ourselves is how we identify ourselves. Our identity is in our posture. So to ask someone to let go of that and maybe bring it down, if not 20 to 50%, that might, I might be asking too much. I might be, you might be um, threatened because I'm asking you to change your identity. So just to let you know, there's, there's a lot of us in these patterns, a lot of us identifying within this pattern. And so um, I just invite you to just take inventory of that as we go along. And if anything at all feels, doesn't feel right, doesn't feel good, don't do it. Just listen and do it in your imagination. And actually the imagination can, can um, hold the place for some really deep learning um, in a cellular level for the body. So, um, so it might feel like you're kind of like on a beach, just hanging out, just like, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> That's the attitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we went through that. Oh, great. Okay. So today, <laughs> today, 
chakras. So uh, Augusta taught the chakras as a way to access alignment, mid midline alignment. And it's brilliant because there's only seven spots to think about, right? As opposed to like, oh, what's going on in like T12? No, you can just go, oh, well, what's, I don't know, what's happening in the diaphragm chakra? So, um, so here we go, the chakras. At the bottom, we have the root chakra. And so as you're sitting or laying or however you want to be, um, you can go ahead and cultivate an energy ball with your hands. And just kind of just, it's kind of warm, so your hands are probably a little warmer than usual, maybe. And let's kind of cultivate this idea of an energy ball. And then maybe you just have to hold the space and allow the vibration of the space time to grow its consciousness. There is consciousness in the space. There is vibrational awareness here and from that vibration holds a consciousness. And then How is it to move the hands away and then draw the hands back to the energy ball? And just noticing, is the space between your hands attracting your hands to it? Or is there a repelling energy and the space is moving your hands away from it? And little by little. I always feel like when I withdraw from it and then I come back that the consciousness has grown and I'm actually I can feel the pulsation of the energy and I can hold the vibration and you know it might be a little tiny tiny energy ball right now that's totally fine I just notice what it feels to attract and to repel the attraction the repelling and so we're going to take half the energy ball, spread it in half, and then we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to try to find the root chakra. So if you're sitting crisscross like this, that might be easier. If you're in a chair, that's fine. You just, uh, or laying down, but you're just going to go ahead and take one half and it's a few inches away from, uh, the lowest part of your body at the pubic bone. And you're just cultivating energy here. So these seven places, they have been scientifically proven. We do have these energy centers, electromagnetic centers in the body. And so notice that if you get too far away, that doesn't feel like anything. If you're right close, that doesn't feel like anything. So it's really just a couple inches away from the place, the site. So that's the red glowing ball of energy, the root chakra. And then if you go up towards the belly at the navel chakra, you'll have the orange. It might be over the belly. It might be a couple inches below. Let's just see what this feels like here. Just so you can find the location. And then what's happening at the diaphragm chakra? The yellow glowing ball of energy. Mm -hmm. The space of the energy ball helping to wake up these energetic wheels of energy we call the chakras. And then coming to the heart, the heart chakra, this beautiful green glowing ball. Okay. The throat, the blue, third eye. It's like purple or lavender. And then at the very top, the crown chakra. Nice. So just making sure you mapped out where these chakras are at because we're gonna go into uh, a, some uh, exploration and awareness with it. So just, it's very clear in your mind's eye what this is and what it looks like. So, Please get comfortable. You can lay down on your back, on your stomach, on your side. If you're uh, someplace 
doesn't feel good today, um, please lie in a way that is going to not aggravate that. Um, have your, your cushions be very comfy. Good. And so now you're just going to take a moment and whatever surface you're laying on, most of you, it looks like you're on your back. That's great. Um, and then just see um, if you can just roll on your skull. Right? If you're laying on your stomach, that means you're probably rolling on your forehead. If you're laying on your side, maybe the side of your skull. If you're on your back, the back of a skull. And just see rolling on the skull. And notice what is your range of motion here? Did you go to the 100%? That's fine, but just see how it is to do less. What is it to do 50% of that effort? And how does the sensation change from the 100% to the 50%? And then what about going to, if possible, 20%. And then you can pause. And can you now see what you are rolling on is not part of the skull, but is actually now trillions of little teeny tiny water balloons. Envision the teeny tiny water balloons, trillions of them. If trillions is too much, you can just think about 40 or 50. And just see how it is. How does that change the way you are resting your head on the floor? How does the feeling of rolling changes? From when you thought of it like a part of your skull. When I did this, I felt like when I changed the perception to these teeny tiny water balloons, I just felt like there was this infinite range of motion, not big, but just I could easily just roll because there was always another water balloon willing to get rolled on. And see if that's allowing a softening in the, in the part of your skull that you're resting on. Is it allowing a softening in the neck, a softening in the spine, softening in the ribs? Are you holding your breath as you do this? Or is this allowing you to find your breath a little easier? I ask you to shift your attention to the red root chakra and imagine that you can place a nice, comfortable sized water balloon right at the root chakra, which would be Place it over the pubic bone. See if you can place it over the pubic bone. And just see this water balloon. It's red, 
but it's filled with this water that's just the most perfect bath water temperature. And so the temperature of the water is allowing the skin in the pubic bone to soften and to receive the weight of it onto itself. So can you envision the water balloon moving down towards the bottom of the pubic bone, towards the crotch and sits bones? So it's really underneath you. It's really in the carriage, hanging out in the carriage of the body. From inside this balloon, a light emanates and shines through the water. How does this light reach into your pubic bone? The structures of the genitals and perineum. Does this light excite the cells or do they try to hide? Adjust the intensity of the light to encourage the, the cells to show themselves. In this recognition of themselves, can you also recognize your sense of self? Oftentimes in the root chakra area, our sense of self is, uh, has been, um, denied or not fully recognized uh, kind of stems from the early uh, the early potty training or the diapers rather the wearing of diapers cuts off feeling to the root chakra this place so you're just kind of reclaiming it you're just reclaiming what's yours and we're doing this with the sense of curiosity you do not need to have an experience. You don't have to feel anything. This is just starting a conversation. An open-ended invitation, if you will, into feeling and sensing yourself in this new space. Next, we go, we go to the orange navel. And as you go, feel free if you, you know, put a hand to uh, help you remember where it's at or you just lay and listen. The orange glowing water balloon sitting at your navel, your belly button. Can you allow the skin here to relax? and open up to the warmth of the water balloon. In the softening, do you sense an allowing or permission to feel? What does it feel like to feel without the feedback of pain informing it? Can you also see a light emanating from inside this water balloon? This light is sending or is sending its light uh, to touch the structures of the top of the pubic bone, the low belly, the large and small intestines, the bladder, the prostate in men and the uterus in women or the spaces of. Oftentimes when we feel pain, we identify with that pain. And so sometimes it's a good practice to not associate a story with it to remind yourself that you are not your pain and your pain is not you
and that you can feel without that feedback. Although it, it might take again some time. But the body remembers, the cells remember, the nervous system remembers. We're just giving it a chance to, to try. Going up next to the yellow chakra, you place a, wa a yellow water balloon here on top of the diaphragm. And you can imagine little or uh, bigger water balloons underneath the diaphragm. There's one that would represent the stomach on the left side, and then there'll be one that would represent the liver on the right, and behind the liver is the gallbladder, and, and perhaps behind the stomach you have the pancreas and spleen behind there. And can you take a few breaths here in the diaphragm chakra? And how does your chakra move with your breath? Where do you see the chakra? Is it on top? Over your body? Did it move to the middle? Is it in your back? Again, there's no just one correct answer. What you experience is valid and true. So then next, see if you can work up towards the green heart chakra and placing an emerald water balloon here on the heart chakra and the warmth of the water balloon softening the ribs to allow a softening of the lungs. The light touching the upper and mid part of the lungs into the heart. It continues through the upper chest, through the collarbones, out through the arm bones all the way to the fingertips. This place is a place I can get very defended. So just placing the water balloon in an invitation to allow a softening to see if it's okay to soften here. And again, just starting that conversation, there's no need to make it do anything. And then next we go to the blue chakra, this blue glowing light the water balloon placed lovingly over the tubes of the throat. Seeing how the warmth of the water softens the trachea that's in front. The esophagus that lies behind it and behind the esophagus, the front of the spine. And to just notice that between these structures, there is space. Space for fluid to move through, space for breath to move through. The structures may seem close together, but there's always space.
And above the trachea, you have the voice box, the larynx. And above that, you have the hyoid bone. which is where the base of the tongue is connected to. Are you able to soften at the hyoid bone? And it's, it's right underneath the chin. Let's see. We poke around there, you can probably find a little bony protrusion on the sides. But just imagine, can you soften this high up underneath the chin? Am I, you're going to feel like you have a double chin. And cultivate the ability to drool. And then next, let's go to the third eye chakra the lavender water balloon sitting like a throne on top of the third eye. The light from this balloon shining into the fatty folds of the brain towards the middle into the ventricles that hold a lake a space in the brain that's filled with fluid of the cerebral spinal fluid. And how this fluid lives in the center of the brain and travels down towards the base of the brain and then coats the sides of the spine like a waterfall. From a lake it turns into a waterfall and just travels down the length of your spine. This fluid is also known to seep out into nerves and in that way it finds there's evidence of CSF in fascia from that network. Fascia is the connective tissue that connects pretty much everything to everything to each other. It's the big inner meshy connective rib suit we have. And next we go to the crown and you have this white water balloon sitting on top of the baby soft spot and imagining the smallest muscles in the body, the hair follicles, the muscles that hold up each individual strand of hair, the hair follicles, the muscles helping the hair follicles reach up and to suspend the crown chakra water balloon above the top of the skull and the brain. And just notice, did you visualize turning your crown chakra first to slightly turn your head right or left? Again, somebody watching probably won't be able to tell this is what you're doing. And this is where the imagination is going to be very powerful. If you can just see it in your imagination and the, the body will respond on a, on a very internal level. But you don't have, to, don't have to worry about doing anything. What is it like to turn your head from the crown chakra consciousness? And then for contrast, you can do it in your neck. Turn your head from your neck. And 
Or imagine turning your head from your neck. And then go back to the crown. How is it to let the crown chakra guide the head in turning? It's going to be smaller. Let's see if that excites the cells. In the skull to know that they can move. Wonderful. Go ahead. That, that was a big exploration. Go ahead and uh, take a moment, roll off your back, roll to your side, go to a position you uh, can rest in for a moment, and just let your brain rest. Just pause. Do what feels good to you, if that's holding on to the legs, rolling on your back, going to the side. You need to stand up and walk around. Feel free to do that. That looks really, really lovely. Um, so next we're going to play around with moving, playing with uh, seeing how we can move within the chakras. So you might want to lay on your back. Again, you can bring your feet to standing. You can lay on your back and um, I'll try to come here. You see me? But I'm just gonna lay on my back, my feet to standing. I'm gonna put my hands behind my head like so. And I'm just going to kind of slide on the back of my body so that I'm bending sideways. So first just get this feeling. You see how it is to just bend sideways in this way. Or imagine or do it in your imagination. Hands behind the head or if it's that's too much, put it behind your head. You can put hands in the low back. Mm -hmm. yep. So now, how would you do this side to side bending from the belly chakra? Seeing the belly chakra like a Nerf ball, like a foamy Nerf ball. And when you slide to one side, one side of that chakra gets condensed and the other side expands and then the opposite is true. Maybe you need to do it big at first to just get a sense of where it's at. Please feel free to, but then after that, see how little effort can be involved. So I'm putting this idea of the fulcrum of the side bending into the chakra. Now go ahead and you can leave that alone. And what is what would it be like to put it in another chakra? To put the fulcrum of the bending perhaps in the diaphragm chakra. The one above it in the yellow. Feeling a softening.
softening in front of the rib cage at the diaphragm, perhaps. What can you let go of to move rather than what do you, we usually start by bracing something. What if I asked, what can I let go of to move rather than what do I need to grip? Just seeing, hmm, that feels different to do it in the sh And then see, are you able to take it into a chakra above that, either the heart chakra or the throat chakra, to try side bending in another place. So in this way, the spine is just following the support of the chakra. It's not trying to lead the direction of, to be the leader in the movement, right? And I'm proving it in my spine. No, I'm gonna take that out of the equation. I'm just gonna see, oh, what if I fold one side of heart chakra Find center and fold to the other side. And if you need to, go ahead and do it in the spine. Go ahead and really do it in the matter of the body. What does it feel like? Oh, I feel like I'm doing something. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's our culture. I'm going to try to let it go. because that actually isn't comfortable for me. So I'm gonna see how can I do this in this place of awareness. So that if I did have to do this for a while, I could do it without hurting myself. Wonderful. Great, let the side bending go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see how it is to do a little sit up action. Now I know I said sit up, that doesn't actually mean sit up. It just, we're just using the idea to play with the chakras even more. So with the hands behind the head, I'm just gonna see, oh, huh. How would it be to fold in the throat chakra to think about doing a sit up? Oh, that's different. What about folding in the heart chakra to think about doing a sit up? And what about in the yellow diaphragm chakra? Allowing the head to seep into these different places. So I'm feeding my head into the throat chakra, exploring the bending possibility there. Feeding the head then into the heart chakra, seeing what that feels like to fold here and then head into diaphragm. I'm doing it big so you can see, but I normally wouldn't do it that big. I normally be like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but to do, but I'll do it big so you can see. So I'm gonna fold in the throat chakra, feed my head into it. Oh, well, that makes it a little easier to try to do a sit up. All right, I'm going to try to do this. Head, feet into heart chakra. And I'm going to start by allowing the letting go to soften here. I'm going to wait for myself. I'm going to wait. And then I'm going to see, can I hook it all the way into the diaphragm? chakra. At first, you just have to be patient. 
There is moments of chaos. I forgot to tell you. There is moments of chaos in the learning. Yeah, but that's where the learning occurs, in that moment of chaos. Wonderful. And then you can really have fun with it and like, well, what would it mean to actually do it from the crown chakra? What if I try to do a sit up from my crown chakra? Thinking about my crown chakra folding. And again, not proving anything. That's great. Let that go. It's looking good, everybody. Thank you for hanging in there. I know this is a different way of, of being in your body and I appreciate your attention. And then go ahead and see. So feeding the, pushing the feet into the earth Hooking the feet up into the low hanging root chakra, legs hooking up into there, and then down, and then without. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that feels really, that feels like an, you know, aerobic exercise, bah! doing something. Going into another place. And then go ahead and feet and legs and hook it up into the foldiness of the navel chakra to do this reverse bridge idea and put it down and then can you hook it all the way up into the diaphragm chakra and put it down and let it go and how else could you explore your chakras? If you wanted to roll to your side, could you imagine this chakra sliding from the midline and going into your side seam? And come back, which chakra took the lead? Was it somewhere in the ribs or pelvis? And then just go ahead and come to sitting and just take a moment to just sit with it, see what you notice. Great. Boom, 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 here. Can you feel in sitting this ability to reach down through the root chakra and let it hang low and let it root itself into the earth? And then the opposite energy of reach goes through the crown chakra. And along the way, the space between each chakra is opening up. It's kind of like a, like a string of pearls. So reaching down through the root chakra and from that, the space between opens up, there's a little lip that goes into each chakra and then there's a reach from the crown out into the stratosphere. So that you're just suspended in the middle between the heavens and the earth through this awareness of your dynamic midline. If you're going to come to standing, do you notice for most of us, we would start by reaching the ribs forward. That's a very strong pattern. And just see, like if you thought about standing up, most likely this would happen. 
the diaphragm chakra would shoot out, the diaphragm, this open part, to move you forward. But what if that can hang back? And what if you can imagine starting from the belly, moving the belly over the root chakra so that you're moving on the pelvis. You're rolling on the pelvis, on the bones of the pelvis, the tissue of the pelvis. And then try again, just see. So familiar, so familiar. Like, yep, that's me. <laughs> I, I identify as a diaphragm forward to stand person. Yeah. <laughs> And everybody would say, yeah, like we're in a self-supporting group. <laughs> and then go ahead and then see how it is to let this take, take a back seat and roll from that idea of belly over the root chakra. And then see if you can, how would you come to standing with that? The legs and feet feeding underneath the root enable to come to standing. Mm -hmm. You cross one leg over the other to come to standing. Everyone stay sitting. But just go ahead when you're standing, just go ahead and take a, uh, some walking steps around. Just walk, just walk for a moment to see what you notice. Good. Now, we're going to see the chakras as floors in the body. Right, so you have the low hanging root chakra floor, you have the belly chakra navel floor. You can go ahead and, and map it out again for yourself. You have the diaphragm floor, the heart, the throat, the third eye, the crown. So just imagine when you step, how would it be to step up to the root chakra. How do I step up to the root chakra? I'm going to let the root chakra win. Yeah. That's right. Laying it. Mm hmm. And I'm keeping my hand there so I'm reminding myself how low it is. Stepping up to it, and my idea of walking. And then go ahead and see if that, once that's clear, you're like, oh, well, how would it be to, idea of stepping onto my navel chakra and bearing, rate, uh, bearing a sense of weightedness into the belly to step. Hmm. Hmm. Do your legs know where your belly chakra is at? Nice. And then after that becomes clear, then like, oh, well, how would it be to, why the hell not? Let's see if I can walk up to my diaphragm chakra. I step up to the height of my diaphragm chakra. Nice. And then what about the heart? Do I ever, do I ever have this sense of walking this high up on my body? Stepping all the way up. So as I step, so as I walk, I'm really thinking about, as I step, I'm putting this sense of 
energy all the way up into that chakra from walking. But there's always a pattern that's very strong. So if that diaphragm chakra is very strong, it's going to jet out. So you might have to ask the diaphragm chakra to hang back so that the other ones can have some attention. Do I know I stepped up to this place? How do I know? That's right. And what about the throat? Did you step all the way up into the throat? So you're actually thinking of stepping forward onto it. So you're going to feel this sense of walking forward through space. That's right. And then third eye. How do I step all the way up into third eye? Right, so as I step, boom. Take your time. See if you read to register it. Step. 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 Stepping into that light of the third eye. There you go. It's your your uh, walking uh, tends to slow down when you're thinking about these different places to hook up into. And then can you walk all the way up into the crown chakra? Stepping high up into crown. And walking with the verticality of the chakras. And maybe it might be helpful to actually think that the chakras are hanging out a little bit more in front of you. And so when you step, you're going to step to that root chakra in front of you. You're going to step into it. It's hovering right in front of you. You're going to step into it. And then see how it is for the uh, belly. Great. Shake it out. Good. So what does that mean if I was to bring my one leg up? If I wanted to balance on one leg, could I have this idea of shifting the root chakra over to that, doesn't matter which leg, choose whatever leg, but you're gonna, what if I thought in my imagination, I'm gonna send the root chakra over to the standing leg and lift the leg. That's right. So I'm going to shift my weight through this organization of the root chakra, moving first over to the standing leg so I can easily lift the other one. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then you can see, oh, well, the root chakra made it. Did the navel, did, the, did, 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 did they all get over? That's right. That's right. Let's first start with that root. Did the root get over the standing foot? Can you trust your root chakra to take you there? To stand into that standing leg and to, and then as, yes, and your leg is feeding into the low hanging root chakra of the leg you're bringing up. And you can think the belly chakra is folding and the space between the root and belly chakra is folding. Wonderful, everyone. Uh, I'll let you go maybe a smidget early. Great, thank you.